and welcome back to Hindustan Astrology. I'm Katya. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the month of April for 2021 Vedic Sidereal Forecast. Okay, you guys, this is the month that we've been waiting for, at least in Vedic Astrology. <laughs> Jupiter is going into Aquarius on April 5th. Now this is gonna be a huge difference. Um, Jupiter has been with Saturn uh, for the past, you know, they've been doing this dance for the past year on and off. And um, Jupiter is actually debilitated in Capricorn. But because he was with Saturn, who was in Capricorn at the same time, you know, we had that big conjunction last uh, December 21st, um, it protected Jupiter a little bit. Uh, now that he's stepping away, he um, is getting out of his sign of debilitation and he's actually going into a sign that he's very strong in, which is Aquarius. And uh, this is gonna be um, a great time in the next three months from April till June, while he's traveling forward in Aquarius. I think we're gonna do a lot of traveling. We're gonna get a lot of things done. We're gonna see our friends. Be with our communities <clears throat> and then he'll go um retrograde june 20th and i think that's when we're going to see the comeback of the virus and then um by the time he enters capricorn again retrograde which will be i think november 20th um you know it's uh the virus should be back again so take advantage Make hay while the sun shines. So April to June, it's gonna be great. So let's take a look at uh, the entire month of April and just see what's going on. Okay, so here we have the April 2021 forecast. This is for the sidereal zodiac, not Western tropical astrology. Uh, if you don't know what your chart is in Vedic, then you can go to the link. I'll put it down in the information section. Uh, there's a link on my website where you can go and find it out. Um, so once you have your Vedic sidereal, um, then you would think about this, this month of transits from your ascendant, which is called your Lagna or your moon sign, which is called your Chandra Lagna. I use Lahiri Ayanamsha and uh, True Node EST Time Zone. This is just a generalized reading for each, well, actually I'm not doing each sign, <laughs> but when I do each sign, it's just a generalized reading. Um, and you know, if you're thinking about your own chart to get the best results, you have to look at your Ashtakavarga chart to see how the uh, transiting planet's um, strength plays out there. To book a private reading with me, go to my consultations page. Again, I'll put that down in the information section. Namaste. And this is uh, Hindustan Astrology, all rights reserved. And let's go. Okay, so first we have April 5th, Jupiter enters Aquarius. At that time, he'll be conjunct Neptune. I think this is gonna be great for the arts. I'm telling you, these next three months, there's gonna be so much fun stuff going on and lots of water sports, you know, all the pools were closed last summer, so we're gonna be able to go out and have fun and, you know, um, yeah, it's gonna be good for three months before he goes retrograde, which I believe is June 20th. Um, so, yeah, Jupiter in Aquarius. So he has a 12-year cycle. So the last time he was in Aquarius was 12 years ago. And um, that would have been, what, 2009? Um, so we were recovering, you know, from the stock market crash. Um, it was uh, pretty crazy. I remember that time. And... Um, Gosh, I'm thinking um, for the United States chart, you know, Jupiter uh, 
inner inquiry, so we'll be conjunct our moon. And we are in Sati Sati, which means Saturn is coming within the sign before, the sign of, and the sign after, the moon sign. It's a very difficult time period. So um, I think this is when we're really going to hear a lot more also because um, uh, it's uh, in Aquarius, it's making a sextile to Uranus in Aries. And that is indicating pioneering spirits and doing new things. And we know that the NASA Artemis moon rocket is going up 2024. And the uh, NASA project, I mean, I'm sorry, the Mars project is uh, 2030. So space travel, all that Aquarian stuff, all that is going to be, um, you're really going to hear a lot more of it once this solidifies into Aquarius. It's exciting, yay. So in your chart, you know, um, Jupiter stepping away, even though Jupiter is protected by Saturn's uh, being in his own sign, he still is debilitated. So um, I think it's gonna be good. And you know, you wanna look whatever house is in Aquarius in your chart. And that's where Jupiter's going to be. So if he goes into your first house, um, Jupiter would be, you know, your first house would be Aquarius. Um, Aquarius rising. So having Jupiter there is uh, really good for money. Um, he brings a lot of uh, abundance. He brings a lot of food. Weight gain can happen here. So be careful when Jupiter goes in the first house. Um, Jupiter in the second house. Um, again, Jupiter, a second house is money. Jupiter is money. That, you're probably going to have a boom. There's going to be a windfall at this time. Um, and food. I mean, my gosh, you know, you're going to be enjoying lots of wonderful food. But in Aquarius, it's probably going to be very, you know, healthy, um, you know, spiritual minded, you know, food, clean food or whatever. Um, second house is a Mark house and having Jupiter there is going to help a lot. So that's going to be good. And that would be if you are, um, backwards, um, Aquarius <laughs> Capricorn. So if you're Capricorn rising, Jupiter's going in your second. So I am throwing it a little bit sign by sign, but I'm not going to do it for the rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the month, just for Jupiter. Uh, okay, so Jupe, so if you are um, uh, Sagittarius rising, then Jupiter is going to go in the third, and that is going to bring you expansive communications, writing, studying. I mean, Jupiter is you know the 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 Karaka, the indicator of education, and it would be opposed to the ninth house, which is his natural house. So. Uh, yeah, if you are Sagittarius rising, you're probably going to be um, going back to school, having something to do with school while Jupiter's here. Um, he does stay in a sign for a year, so this is like a year-long thing. So, you know, school usually takes longer than that. So, you know, it's probably indicating, you know, a lot of intense studying or the initiation of studying. And travel, probably traveling for, for study. Okay, so if you are Scorpio rising, Jupiter's going in the fourth house. Um, Jupiter in the fourth can bring big homes. If you're a woman and you're not married, you can meet your husband in a home or a big home during this time. Um, you know, Jupiter is exalted in the sign of Cancer and Cancer rules the fourth house. So he does very well here, uh, you know, you know, irregardless of whatever sign he's in. But um, being an Aquarius is going to bring, um, you know, certainly um, uh, real estate opportunities, you know, large homes, real estate, uh, money through the mother is a possibility as well, okay? Uh, if you are Libra rising, Jupiter's going into the fifth house, and fifth house is children, education, gambling, cryptocurrency, mantras, Jupiter's guru, fifth house is creativity. You're gonna be expanding your creativity quite a bit 
at this time, uh, especially with Neptune there. I mean, music, music is going to be big for you. Libra, uh, if you are uh, Virgo rising, then Jupiter's going into the sixth house. Sixth house is what? Service, work, education. I mean, um, not education, I'm sorry. Service, work, <laughs> uh, enemies, um, health. Jupiter in the sixth house can help your health quite a bit. Uh, and if you are have been trying to go on a diet, uh, good luck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter loves to eat, right? He's food and lux, you know, abundance. So, <clears throat> you know, just put the focus on healthy eating and then you'll, you'll be fine, I think. Um, but especially in, in Aquarius, um, you know, it's all about service and sixth house is service. So I could see you, you know, helping those that are less fortunate or maybe even with Neptune, you know, helping those who have drug addictions or something. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Virgo. So, okay, Leo. If you are Leo rising, then Jupiter is going into your seventh house. And um, that's exciting. You know, Jupiter, um, he... Whenever he goes into the seventh house, he, uh, you know, there's more parties with our um, significant other or our business associates. Um, he can bring, you know, expanded business, like suddenly your business just expands. Um, but it's an expansion. For a woman, Jupiter is the karka of the spouse. So when it goes into the seventh house, you probably are going to Meet somebody very significant. If you're already married, then it was probably a significant partner in business, okay? So that's very good. Um, now, if you're a Cancer rising, then Jupiter is going into your eighth house. And the eighth house is, uh, um, you know, it's a moksha house. So it's the fourth and the, and the twelfth. Uh, but the eighth house indicates death. It's the Scorpio house. It's all about transformation and rebirth cult studies, that kind of thing. Jupiter there is the professor. So, you know, can't, um, Cancer Rising, you're probably going to be studying um, a lot of occult studies at this time and just like really, you know, uh, jumping into the, down the rabbit hole, into the black hole and just disappearing. <laughs> but this is what's going to bring you uh, joy and happiness. You know, Jupiter is, is hope and faith and optimism. And so to attain those things, you're gonna to need to study occult studies and it's fun. You know, cancers love that kind of stuff. So it'll be a good year. Okay, if you are Gemini rising, then Jupiter's going into the ninth house. And the ninth house is his natural house. And, um, you know, Jupiter or Gemini rules the mind and ninth house uh, is higher learning, um, you know, Higher, higher education, um, long distance travel. So if you're Gemini rising, you might be traveling for your teaching or your education a lot, which, hey, that's great because we've been on lockdown. So, you know, it's, you know, and Geminis do not like to be a caged butterfly or a caged, you know, in a gilded cage, right? Canary in a cage. Uh, they need to get out. So Jupiter will bring a lot of joy and hope and optimism back to Gemini by allowing them to travel long distance. Okay, if you are um, Taurus rising, uh, then Jupiter's going into your 10th house. And what's the 10th house? 10th house is um, career, but it's recognition in career. And Jupiter in Aquarius, um, you know, you, you could ha need like a spiritual guru in your field who like elevates you to a new status, you know, somebody who is a mentor and takes you under their wing and helps you out. I mean, that would be a perfect thing for this Taurus and, um, you know, serving those less fortunate as well um, in the homeland. I mean, it's opposite the fourth, fourth house. So, um I think it's gonna bring expansive ideas as well, about new ideas about your business. Um, and it's gonna give you a lot of recognition for that. Okay, if you are Aries rising, 
then Jupiter is going into your 11th house. And what's the 11th house? It's uh, communities. It's um, elder siblings. It's great games, like getting that great big check at once instead of like a whole bunch of little ones. Um, and it's, um, I mean, it's communities, really. I mean, it's friends, you know, many friends all together. And having Jupiter there is going to expand that Aries. And so, you know, you're probably going to find yourself meeting all these new people right now. <laughs> and probably has something to do with creativity or spirituality as well. You know, it's opposite the fifth house of creativity, but Jupiter is very spiritual. So you're probably going to meet a lot of spiritual friends at this time. If you are Pisces rising, then we have uh, Jupiter in your 12th house. Well, Jupiter does great in the 12th house. He is um, a ruler of the 12th house through Pisces. And you, if you are Pisces rising, then, you know, um, it's a natural fit. So I think you're going to meet a lot of spiritual teachers from overseas. You're going to uh, get a lot of hope and ideas. Your dreams are going to be out of this world, literally, like, you know, ET kind of dreams. It'd be really good for you, Pisces. So I, I feel good about that. So all of that starts April 5th. And then we go to April 7th uh, to the 12th. Venus is Gandanta in Pisces, Aries. What does that mean? Well, this is um, uh, the end of a water sign to the beginning of a fire sign. It's like 26.4 to 3.2 of the next fire sign we have. The Gandanta zone, which is the karmic knot that must be unraveled before we go on to the next level. But it feels like we're drowning. The literal translation is not drowning, though. It is uh, end of knot. Gand, not anta, end. So Venus Gandanta, you know, this is like almost a Venus retrograde kind of feeling. Old flames may come back, but Venus is exalted, so I feel like it's going to be good. Good for money too. Uh, then Venus ninth, Venus goes into Aries and she'll be in a Parivartana yoga with Mars. What does this mean? Well, this means um, they are in each other's signs. So Mars is in Taurus ruled by Venus. Venus will be in Aries ruled by Mars. And so they are exchanging each other's signs. It's like they're in each other's signs and it strengthens them. Um, for the US chart, I think this is like the fifth to the sixth house, yeah. So education and health, back and forth. I think things are going to get better with this combination. Then we have the new moon on April 11th. Uh, it's at 28 degrees of Pisces, Revati, Nakshatra, um, 10.30 p.m. EST. Now, I did a whole video with Sandeep on this, and I'm going to scroll down to the chart and briefly go over it. Um, this is the Pisces new moon chart that we in Vedic astrology use to gauge what the whole year is going to be like. And so this is um, done from Washington, D.C. This is when I made this. Um, so the ascendant will be Scorpio for Washington, D.C. So the new moon, as you can see, is the fifth house. And so education, you know, education is going to be coming back. Um, Venus is still in her Gandanta zone. And um, in, in the house of health. And whenever Venus is in the sixth house, it indicates restaurants. So restaurants will be coming back. Um, but yeah, education, this shows a real um, uh, emphasis upon education. And um, children, especially getting the kids back in school. Yeah. And Revati is Pushan. He's um, the shepherd who flocks it, who, you know, shepherds his flock. Um, and they're, what do they do? They travel, you know. So traveling, traveling is going to be coming back. Mercury's there. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm feeling good about this part of um, the spring. It's a good new moon chart. And I'll put the link down to the other video down below. Then April 13th, we have Mars entering Gemini, and he'll be stepping away from Rahu, because as you can see right now, he's still with Rahu, uh, which makes things intense and violent. That's why we've had all these horrible attacks and things. When he goes into Gemini, he'll get away from that, and that'll be good. April 14th, Sun enters Aries, 
and uh, he's going to be exalted. Woohoo! That's wonderful. I'm, uh, I'm going to write that down, actually. He's going to be exalted. Um, and so energy's going to come back, you know. And I can't wait to get outside and get more in shape. That's, that's what I'm looking forward with this Aries energy. And Mercury enters Aries as well. Uh, then Mars sextile Jupiter, uh, April 18th. Uh, again, that's really good for energy. It's good for sports, you know, it's good for getting things done. Then April 26th, we have the full moon at 12 degrees of Libra in Swati Nakshatra at 11.32 p.m. EST. So let's take a look at that chart. So we have, where's the moon? Here we are, down here. So moon's a little isolated. You know, I mean, it's next to K2, but it's, an, it's a shadow planet. So moon's, moon's kind of ice. Moon does not like to be isolated. Um, and Swati is ruled by Arcturus, which is a star. We think it's the oldest from our folklore. Um, it's been recorded, and it's the farthest off of the ecliptic band. And so it's seen as a wanderer or an outsider. And here, moon is in Swati, and really isolated from the other planets and feeling very alone and outside. Um, we have been in quarantine. That's the thing. That's what concerns me. So this is a month from now. Today is the 24th of March. Um, I think it's us dealing with our feelings of isolation. You know, we're all so sick and tired of being quarantined and we don't want to get sick again, but you know, it's, it's a real touch and go. And then you know, we hear about these like crackdowns on the parties in Florida and stuff over spring break. Um, so Moon and Swati uh, is Libra ruled by Venus and Venus is in opposition in Varney ruled by Venus. So this is gonna have a lot. Oh, and it's in the sixth house in Washington DC. This is the restaurants, y'all. This is the restaurants meeting and um, coming back on board. That's what this is about. Yeah, so the full moon at the end of April. The first one is about the kids getting back on board and us traveling. And the second one is more about um, us birthing a new reality. Barney is, you know, the yoni, the female reproductive organ that births life. And so it's a very painful, transformative process. And we're going through that right now, trying to get on the other side of this quarantine. And this shows the struggle. You know, we've been isolated. Some restaurants are still isolated and it's like it's come back and forth. And I don't think anybody realized how important restaurants were. I mean, a hundred years, they certainly weren't. Everybody ate at home and it was like an insult if you didn't eat grandma's food, you know? But now it's like, um, it is a fundamental aspect of American business. So getting them back on board is important. Um, and then, and then, uh, Mars and Ardra, Venus and Aries disposits to Mars and Ardra. Well, you know, when Rahu was in Ardra last year, it was when, um, the pandemic started. So this might harken back to some of the fears and phobias about that, perhaps. Um, yeah. Eighth house, because eighth house is fears and phobias, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we're still not quite on the other side of this, y'all. So we still need to be cautious. You know, Saturn, Pluto, we've got to be cautious. Uh, but not let our fear take over at the same time. Okay, April 27th, Pluto goes retrograde. Two degrees of Capricorn, Tara Ashada, and it's going to go back. I can't remember. It might go back into Sagittarius. I don't, you know, I don't think so. I think it goes back to the beginning of Pluto and stays in Capricorn. I can't remember. But, but that energy, you know, what is Pluto? Pluto is um, death, rebirth. He's Hades, god of the underworld, Yama, God of destruction, or not destruction, actually. He, he was kind of the person that brought you across the river uh, after you died, Yama. 
didn't actually kill you. But Pluto indicates dark societies, hidden things, fears, um, you know, any kind of secret societies, mafia, that kind of energy is Pluto. So when he goes, when he changes directions, all that energy comes forward and is felt. And he's with Saturn. And so um, this is all transformation, you know. Um, in the United States chart, we have Pluto in Capricorn. And hello, it takes 244 years for Capricorn to come back to the same sign. So only countries feel this. And having um, us just enter our Pluto return, and then he goes retrograde, um, there's going to be, you know, some transformation. Um, let's look at the trines of Pluto. So who else is in an Earth sign? Uh, this chart is the day before, so that's not, not a bad gauge. Um, well, Rahu's in Taurus, and, uh, and there's nothing in Virgo. And there's nothing opposite. So basically, Rahu is going to get really activated when Pluto goes retrograde. Even though the degree is pretty far off, still, um, yes. Yeah. So, and in, in the United States house, this would be the sixth house of health. So health stuff will get activated at this time. So I'm warning you. Be careful, wear your mask, keep doing everything you're doing. I mean, it's, we're, it's gonna be another year, I think. Um, I really think it's gonna be another year before we're like officially on the other side um, of this pandemic and all of the craziness that comes with it. So be vigilant, but we've got a wonderful uh, winter, window of opportunity right now while Jupiter is in uh, Aquarius going direct. So that's April 5th, June 20th. So I hope that helps you for the month of April. Uh, if you're interested in a reading, um, just click the link below. I'll put the consultation link down there. And also don't forget about my new Umas Upayas Aromatherapy Navagraha Elixirs. They are elixirs that are meant to be done in conjunction with uh, doing your mantras and they get help you to get in tuned uh, to the frequency of the planets. So I hope this finds you well. Namaste. Thank you.